So let's do a little side-by-side -side comparison today with the fifth gen and the third gen. I thought this would be a good review to do for a few reasons. A, I've got 14,240 miles in my truck and it's been almost exactly one year. One month from now, it'll be one year since this truck got delivered. And so I feel like I've owned it long enough to do this review, a one year review, even though it's been 11 months, they will. Um, but I've driven it enough for the average mileage of roughly a year's ownership. And I can go over the couple of things that I don't like. Uh, for example, when I'm unbuckled, this thing like flashes and glitches out like that on the dash. It's not just like a little seatbelt reminder like that, which isn't so annoying. It like flashes repeatedly on and off the screen, but there's no like sequence to it. It's just like, depending on the bump you hit, <laughs> it'll either pop up or go away. So that's one very, very minor thing that doesn't really affect the performance whatsoever of the truck. but. It is definitely a little bit annoying. So I'm gonna turn this thing off. This is one of the differences you're gonna see. So I'm going to go over these trucks right here. I'm very lightly gonna throw in the first gen, but before we get into this video further, you can enter to win both of these trucks at the exact same time right now. Yes, 50 times entries are live for this truck and this truck at the exact same time, and it ends tonight at midnight. So tonight, August 4th at 11.59 p.m. The giveaway for dual entry is over. If you want 50 times entries in dual entries, which means every $1 you spend gets you 50 entries for that truck and 50 entries for that truck. It's not split between the two. It's legitimately doubling your entry. So it's essentially the equivalent of 100X. 50 for this one, 50 for that one for every dollar you spend. So of course, the more money you spend, the more entries you get, but it only takes one lucky entry. So take advantage of it while you can. And the website link is in the description below if you want to check that out, or you can just go to lmpgear.com and it should pop up pretty close to the top of the surface. So now that we have gotten that part addressed, let's get into this video. So in the previous video, I did a comparison between the Persian and the third gen, and I had spoken briefly at the end of that video of how I could very easily daily drive this truck over this truck. Now, keep in mind, I've not always had a new truck, so it's not like, oh, I've always driven that, so I don't know what it's like to own an older pickup truck. This truck right here is also mine. It's a half ton Dodge gas truck with 272,000 miles on it. Okay, so yes, I know what it's like to drive an old truck. And, you know, my wife and my wife's personal truck right there is also a third gen Cummins. So I can talk on the real differences in main things I like and dislike between these two trucks because I legitimately have been around them and own them for a long time. So I'm going to go through the difference because there might be some of you that are a, just curious for the entertainment value, but there could also be some of you that are genuinely considering like, do I just pay cash and get a $20,000, $25,000, $30,000 if you want a really nice one, third gen, 5.9 Cummins, that's nice and clean, or do I go with something that's, you know, brand new maybe you found a brand new one for 65 70 75 thousand bucks you're like i could just put 25 30 grand down on a new truck and i yes i'll have a payment but are the benefits worth it enough to have a new truck over an older pre-emissions truck and i'm going to go over the details and this is just my personal opinions and feedback on the truck some of the stuff is not just an opinion but a lot of the features i'm going to talk about and the things that i'm going to discuss are based around my personal preferences and opinions on the trucks. And if you don't agree with it, that is totally fine. You have the right to do But if you're gonna disagree with it, at least do it in the comment section so I can read your disagreement and other people can also see why you do agree or disagree with any of the statements that I make in this video. But do not forget, you can enter to win either one of these trucks here at the exact same time right now. Link in the description below. Ends tonight. So I'm gonna start over here with the 2005 5.9 Cummins. Both of these trucks here are automatic trucks, okay? This is an 05, 130,000 miles on it, leveled, 35s, 17s, all that good stuff, right? The overall truck, aside from the built transmission, is mostly stock. Cold air intake, etc. cetera, um, but no like big injectors, big turbo, stuff like that. So in terms of the cab and interior, I'll show you the inside of this thing. Uh, you know, it doesn't have the gigantic screens and it doesn't have all the digital gauge cluster stuff and all that, but in terms of the essentials of the truck itself, this truck has pretty much all of the 
modern amenities in terms of things that the new truck over right there has the only difference is it's just dated version of it now if you go from like this truck and you go back 14 years to this although this thing is super cool it doesn't even have like cup holders interior like this with full power seats and the three seats separate up front with the flip up center console the big back doors um the short back doors for the normal crew cab trucks or quad cab trucks like that was just not an option in that truck right there so that's why i'm comparing this one to that one because they're the only trucks here that can be relevantly compared now like i said interior wise same seating situation other than that cab is slightly bigger but six passenger flip up center seat in the front um, the only difference is my four wheel drive on my new truck is electronically activated versus this is a manual shift on the floor which is not a problem and you can still get that if you get like a um, tradesman or a more base model um, fifth gen you can still get the same exact uh, four-wheel drive on the floor setup and you can still get pretty much 90 percent of your gauges being this style i guess more traditional style instead of the fully digital stuff are there any real crazy benefits to a new truck if you saw my previous video that i made it was driving this truck versus this one here down the road and the interior on this truck although it's not again it's not a brand new truck it's not exactly like the fifth gen Compared to the older models of second gens, first gens and stuff, this thing is fairly quiet inside, rides super good. The power delivery is, in my opinion, almost every bit as good as my new truck. Obviously my new truck is a little bit snappier off the start, but in terms of the, the overall power of the truck, it doesn't feel that much different in terms of the actual overall power you can get out of the truck for just driving down the road and cruising, towing, stuff like that. Now I will say this, I have not towed with a third gen on a regular basis. I have towed with my fifth gen a lot and I've mostly only hauled, you know, seven to 8,000 pound pickup trucks behind a tandem dually axle trailer that weighs quite a bit, just empty alone. But in terms of my average load, I'm pulling behind that fifth gen is usually 10, 12,000 pounds, nothing crazy, but I have used it quite a bit in that application. And I can't speak on the third gen because I haven't done it regularly with this truck or a third gen in general. But that fifth gen, when you're towing, it's like, you don't even know what's back there. It's so smooth. It's got the Ram air suspension. It is so nice, but that's probably like between the electronics and the Ram air suspension. Those are probably the only like big, big differences in terms of like obvious things you're gonna notice different about the truck. Other than the fact that, of course, it's got new leather interior and this truck is not leather interior, although you could have gotten it that way. But in terms of what you get on the interior, this is it. You still have the six passenger, you still have the back doors, you still have the short bed, you still have pretty much almost the same power, not exactly the same, but close. Um, you have a lot of the same thing going on here. The only difference is pre-emissions, which you have to put a price on that as well. This truck here is a 2022 model. I bought it brand new and it was sitting on a lot, not sold for like two years. And it was their last 22 model. And the only reason I bought it instead of getting a truck like that is they were offering me a screaming deal. It was like $20,000 under sticker. And then they gave me a lifetime powertrain warranty on it as long as it was serviced at a Ram dealer. I mean, it was a pretty screaming deal for the current market at the time. And I was like, um, heck yeah, I'll, I'll do it. So. Here's the interior difference on this truck. Obviously it looks different. It's got a different feel. The seats are different quality. The center console on this one, which can easily be swapped on a third gen, just so you know, it's not that hard to do. Um, but this one has cup holders versus the other one does not have center console cup holders. But the trade-off is that one has pop-out cup holders right here um, versus this truck just has a storage bin here, which I obviously like this better. These are more stable than the pop-out cup holders on a third gen. but. Um, the third gen does still have them. I just didn't pop them out for that. In terms of the interior though, overall, six passenger, um, flooring has about the same space other than it doesn't have the shifter right here. The four wheel drive is push button. And of course it has all the digital fancy gauge cluster stuff and all that. In terms of the interior cab noise, the cab's obviously quieter on this. It's a lot quieter. There's just more technologies for sound dampening, stuff like that that were built into this truck. Um, but in terms of like, the feeling of the power going down the road at a, at, from a stop, this truck definitely accelerates faster and it's snappier. Um, I don't know if that has to just do with the fueling on this truck or the turbo on this truck, or it makes a little bit more power. All I know is the way that this thing puts down the power from a stop 
like zero to 60, it's much snappier than obviously this truck here, which is 20 years older, almost 20 years older. Um, but in terms of the overall power, in terms of like how it feels once you're getting up to speeds and stuff, I mean, the third gen has the power. It's just not delivered the same way, if that makes sense. This truck has all the power options, but that truck also does. Again, my main things I'm gonna point out that are different, if it makes a big difference to you, the feeling of the interior in terms of if you get leather in a new truck even versus these ones. This truck is just a little bit more comfortable. It rides a little bit softer, rides a little softer, interior is a little better, cab's a little quieter, and towing's a little more enjoyable with the Ram Air. If you don't have the Ram Air suspension in the rear end, it probably isn't gonna feel much different towing with this versus that. But other than that, the overall power this thing puts out and the overall configuration of the truck itself is not drastically different. I mean, you're talking like 320 to 340-ish stock from this truck and about 370 for this truck. So in terms of the overall power, they're not that different. It's just the way that the power is delivered. It feels different out of this truck. Now, I will say this, if you drive a lot, like I mean a lot, like I put 15,000 miles in my truck in a year, I don't drive this thing a lot. Those miles are mostly for the once a month that I go and I pick up like a truck like that and I have to tow it for three or four hours somewhere. That's where most of my miles come from. So in that regard, if I was doing that a lot, which I do, this truck is more enjoyable. The cruise, switching in and out of gears and just sitting there, hardly even keeping a hand on the steering wheel and the thing is just like a laser straight. With the Ram Air suspension, you hardly feel a single bump with a load behind it. I mean, it is just nice. I mean, it, it's just hard to beat. It's super enjoyable for that. And I do a lot of hunting out of state. I travel long distances. You don't need a, a diesel for that necessarily. Since I do have other applications where I use my truck for towing, that's why I have the diesel. But in terms of those long trips, if you do a lot of long distance, it's just hard to beat the amenities of that. Never having to fill up def or the convenience of the better price tag. Those are gonna be the main differences that I have to point out about these two trucks here because they're the same configuration, crew cab short beds. They make almost the same power, not quite. They just deliver the power a little bit differently. It wouldn't be that hard to make up the difference in power and torque and get this truck to produce that. I mean, you're talking a very, very marginal difference. I will say this. You can't buy this truck with a lifetime powertrain warranty and there's probably not too many places that you can still get this one. If that's a big deal breaker for you and you're like, you know, I'm gonna have this truck for the next 15, 20 years, I really need that lifetime powertrain warranty. There's probably somebody in the country is offering it or will offer it. I know that there's somebody just 30 minutes from me. They were offering lifetime powertrain warranties on all their new Ram trucks. And it was redeemable anywhere in the United States as long as your vehicle was serviced by a Mopar dealer. That was it. That was the only requirement was that your vehicle was serviced. So they had records that you actually took care of your truck. But other than that, it was a lifetime powertrain warranty on the truck, which is what I got for mine. And, um, now, I didn't buy mine local. I bought mine out of state because locally they weren't doing it at the time. But if that is a deal breaker for you and you're just like, you know what? I can put up with the emissions. I can put up with filling up the def tank. If I could have a lifetime powertrain warranty and I'm going to keep that truck for freaking ever and it's always going to be covered in terms of anything that's abnormal. If that's a deal breaker for you and you've got to have that, that answers your question on that. But if you don't care about that because either the price tag is just not within reason or you just don't care about the features enough to even justify it regardless of warranty. This truck here, you will not be disappointed owning it. I have even thought about it. I just told my wife this and I, I said it in my previous video. I said, I could sell that truck today. Like if I didn't have to tow stuff all the time, that was like three, four, five, couple months ago I drove 13 hours one way, 13 hours back just to buy a truck. It was like the overall trip broken up was like two and a half days of driving between breaking up the trip. If I did not have to do that kind of stuff, I would probably, I will probably at some point own one of these if I do not have to do that much driving or something similar. Currently this fits my needs better because of the business that I'm in. That out of the picture, if I'm just day to day, I'm back and forth to work, I'm towing, you know, 15, 20,000 pounds a couple times a year, nothing crazy in terms of towing every day. And I just want a good running, reliable diesel that's comfortable and it meets pretty much all the needs. It's just not 
blinged out like this thing, this truck will do pretty much everything this truck will do. This might do it with more style, but this truck will do pretty much everything that mine can do. Almost everything. So take that into consideration. The main difference is if you can get a lifetime warranty, that's great, you can't on that. And if you like the fancy stuff, obviously you're not gonna have that in this truck. In terms of the overall truck itself, those are my only main things that I would say to consider. And hopefully you guys will take those things into consideration. Now, hopefully that was of some type of value to you because I know that these trucks sometimes, you know, sometimes when you get into the new truck shopping thing, you know, like, you know, looking at stuff like this, you go, oh man, I just, I gotta have it. I gotta have it, gotta have it, gotta have it. Like it's so much different. It's so much better. And although I am not disagreeing that it's totally different in terms of style and certain features in terms of comforts and amenities and luxuries that you don't need, but they're just nice to have. This truck has tons of things that this truck just, it doesn't have. And you just can't, you can't even install it on the truck. Like it's just never gonna have it. But in terms of things that you need, to me, in terms of criteria, like four doors and a short bed or a long bed and four wheel drive and the power, this truck can tick all those boxes just fine. I was gonna put a cap on that video there. Hopefully that was of some value to you because I know that in the market of these trucks, like I even had a buddy who was looking at getting a new truck or he was debating just getting a clean older truck like this. And he's like, man, he's like, would I just rather put the money down? Try to find one of those with lifetime warranty. If I'm going to keep it forever, it might be worth it to me. But then again, I don't necessarily want to have that kind of a payment or that kind of a price tag on a vehicle, you know, but those are things that I would bounce back and forth with, with him in the conversation. I thought this would be a good video to share with you guys because I'm sure there's people in that same predicament where they're kind of debating back and forth. Like, do I get a new truck? Do I just do something like this? What's like, what are the things that somebody that owns both of these things Say the real main differences are like what are the real differences like what are you looking at that's like actually noticeably different quiet interior more fancy luxuries you don't need but they're nice to have and if you're towing a ton this thing's definitely easier to keep in the lane but hauling up a ton of weight and effortlessly towing up and down hills through all kind of terrain grade changes and all that stuff but like i said i have not towed with one of these enough to say that they can't do the exact same thing just as easily okay so i'm not saying this truck can't do that because i haven't done it all i'm saying is with this one that's my experience and i would have no complaints in that category just fancy luxuries and add-ons but the overall trucks side by side pretty much the same in terms of power output and what they're capable of doing it's just a matter of what's your preference and what's your price tag I'd like to enter for both of these trucks at the exact same time this is your time to do that it ends tonight so if you do not get in by tonight you cannot get entered for dual entry for both these trucks at the same time 50 times entries link in description below thanks so much guys i'll catch you in the next video peace